it is May the 4th. It is the unofficial Star Wars Day. And I thought it would be fun. I had a few people actually write to me um, who said, this is what gave me the idea. I had a couple people write to me and say, hey, John, May the 4th, you should rank your Star Wars movies and all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, you know what? That's what we're going to do. So guys, congratulations. And you're welcome. I'm about to give you the official ironclad, totally true, no bias, immutable and indisputable <laughs> rankings of the 12 major Star Wars theatrical films. This is honestly a major feat because you you do not like to do rankings. I, I, I don't like to do lists. Yeah. But I mean, I especially don't like to do lists when being asked a question. Yeah. Right. And like, on the spot. I don't mind if you say, hey, I've got some time. I can formulate my thoughts because after all, if it's going to come from me, it's the de facto definitive there, list. There, it's only, it's not an opinion. It's scripture. It's scripture. Oh my Lucas gosh. Film oh my right God, now Chris. at their offices. <laughs> Jesus I just want to make sure that the next few days for you, Ray, are real rough. At, at, at Lucasfilm <laughs> right now, I, I was I was courteous enough to give Lucasfilm a heads up that I was putting this list together for oh them. Oh my gosh, so what a mensch. Right now, the entire staff at Lucasfilm was gathered around a TV watching this What's live up, stream KK? so they themselves can know what, what the official <laughs> list is. So here yes. you go, guys. The absolute, not subjective, purely objective, 100% written in the stars fact. Be your list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to start at number 12 here. And at number 12, at the very bottom, Clone Wars. That movie sucked so bad. Even, even the TV show Clone War fans will go, okay, Clone Wars is great, Clone Wars is great. I'm talking about the movie. Oh, yeah. Well... There's that. We just pretend like it doesn't exist and we watch the series. I mean, how can a movie with Jabba's cousin who talks like this, how can that not be considered an all-time classic? Now, I don't Joe. understand. It, it is so bad. It is so bad. So at number 12, uh, we're going to go at Clone Wars. All right. Speak, staying on the theme of clones, at number 11, we're going to go uh, Attack of the Clones. I, I, even defenders of the prequels, much like defenders of Clone Wars, the series will say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even defenders of the prequels will go, they can say, well, you know, the prequels aren't that bad, John. Uh, Attack of the Clones. Okay, yeah, there's that. Like e even people who defend the prequels will go, oh, yeah, Attack of the Clones. Uh, that that one was pretty sands. rough. Gets everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it just gets everywhere. All right. Uh, coming in next. We've got, oh, I put that in the wrong order, to be honest with you. Uh -oh. This is why we don't no. do top the fifth. This is why I had to look at this. I had to look no. at the list. All right. Uh, next up is going to be, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this. The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, I am... Much like I just said, the defenders of the prequel trilogy will go, yeah, that one was really bad. Uh, I, who am somewhat a defender of the sequel trilogy, mm -hmm. even I got to go, oh my God, the Rise of Skywalker was so bad. I mean, maybe not as bad as Attack of the Clones or Clone Wars, but Rise of Skywalker is truly a horrendous pile of dog shit. It's an absolutely terrible movie. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's keep climbing up the list here. Uh, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, comes in at number nine. I think it is um, probably. Oh, sorry, I wrote that out of out of order. I'm sorry. Revenge of the Sith is actually number eight. So let me fix that for Let's you. Strike that from the. Uh, there we go. Order there. It's okay. We'll fix um, it in post. The yeah. Phantom Menace is uh, the number nine. Phantom Menace. Um, it's a movie that. I drove 2,000 miles so I could go to my favorite movie theater to watch the debut of a new Star Wars movie. And and, uh, and my first viewing, I loved it. Woo, I loved it. And then I saw my second viewing. I'm like, oh, it wasn't as good as I as the first time, but it was still great. And then my third time I watched it, I'm like, well, no, 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 it's, it's, it's still good. And then I saw the fourth time. I'm like, well, you know, this isn't actually a very good. And then I saw it 17 times in theaters. Oh my God. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, he had to be sure. 17 times in theaters, partially because at the time I was also working at a visual effects company and we would like go 
at least twice every week in the afternoons to go see this visual effect, the greatest achievement, the greatest jump forward in visual effects history to me was the Phantom Menace. And we would go like twice a week, but every single time I watch it, I'm like, oh no, this is so bad. Uh, and then we move on to number eight, which is Revenge of the Sith. To me, what I came to believe is the least offensive of the prequel films. I mean, yes, sand and no, and like, but I have the high ground. How the fuck does that make any sense? Anakin, you're breaking my heart. You're breaking my heart. You guys are being mean. <laughs> that movie's so fucking bad. But, but. Defend it. No. You know what? I remember I did a rewatch of um, Revenge of the Sith years ago with me, Schnepp, Harloff, a couple other guys, Dennis. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know what? I I think this is the least bad uh, of the thing. There oh, there's yeah. there's definitely some really cool things in it, and so it gets uh, number eight on my list. All right, number seven, we go the Last Jedi. There there are things about the Last Jedi that I quite like, and actually the thing that a lot of people complain about in the Last Jedi, the the handling of Luke, I still contend, and I will debate, and I will win this debate every time. If you don't think that was Luke from the original Star Wars movies, I don't know that you watch the original Star Wars movies. I agree with that. This the the characterization is man. Now he didn't do the things I wanted him to do in the Last Jedi, but personality rate, character trait wise, this is exactly the same. This is the Luke Skywalker from the original trilogy, and even though it was completely the opposite of what I wanted to see Luke do, I actually ended up quite liking the approach they took with Luke. That being said, it is also a movie that had that damn casino planet. And yeah. that and that was a big chunk of the movie. And that whole thing was pointless and useless and dumb, as well as a number of other things. But well, yeah. And then the whole time, the ship's just getting bombarded, slowly getting oh, yeah, bombarded. The, you know what it was? Slowly that is getting the, bombarded. That is the slowest chase scene since the Vespa gang. And they kept cutting to it. And then I, it was like, they finally lost. So it was like, dude. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I at the end of the day, I th I personally still think that the good of the Last Jedi outweigh the bad of the Last Jedi, but I do rank it as low down at number seven. All right, so number six, Solo: A Star Wars Story. Um, again, this was a movie that ended up being way better than it deserved to be. I still consider it to be a um, fun space adventure movie. You know, d did it really feel like a Star Wars film? Eh, I, I agree with the criticism that maybe it didn't really feel a lot like a Star Wars film, but it, it was still a fun, uh, good time at the movies. I really enjoyed uh, Solo enough so that it makes number six on my list. All right. At number five, we get to The Force Awakens. Um, this was a movie that unlike... Uh, the Phantom Menace is a movie I ended up enjoying more and more every time we saw it. I remember me and Schnepp used to run across the street because this is back in the AMC days. Me and Schnepp would run across the street because our office and our studio is across the street from the AMC Burbank 16. Me and Schnepp at least a couple times a week. We had our AMC pass because we worked for AMC. We just run across the street at lunch when we had some time between shooting movie talk and any other shows we were shooting in the afternoon and we'd just go over and watch Star Wars The Force Awakens. And we liked it more and more every time we saw it. Again, not never as good as the original trilogy, granted, but uh, we really quite enjoyed it, uh, even with some of the weaknesses it had. At number four, uh, Rogue One. This is a movie that, to me, is, is, is kind of like The Force Awakens as well. It gets better to me every time I watch it. And it's funny because I remember when Rogue One first came out, a lot of people were like, oh yeah, love the second half of the film, but the first half is a little slow. And I was kind of the opposite. I mean, I did love the second half of the movie. I did, absolutely. The, the assault on Scarif and all that kind of stuff. It's fa fabulous, fantastic. I actually like the first part of the movie more. The, 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 the foundational stuff that they did, the lore building that they did. I, I love the first half of Rogue One even more than I like the second half of Rogue One. And so, yeah, Rogue One for me comes in at number four. At number three, uh, A New mm. Hope, or what most people would just refer to as <laughs> Star Wars, <laughs> right? The original Star Wars movie. The first movie my mom ever took me to when I was a child. 
uh, earliest childhood memory I have. I don't have a single another me memory until years later when my aunt, uh, my aunt uh, Leonora took me to go see Empire Strikes Back. That that's the next childhood memory I have. Like, but I remember in these faint pictures in my head of my mom taking me to a movie theater and watching Star Wars. So that that's the movie to me. All right, and number two, what many people will consider to be number one, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, just a masterpiece of a film. Um, it, it, it was the movie that I think for a lot of people, it changed the perception of a lot of people at that time from Star Wars being this global hit to this is actually incredible filmmaking. And they should have realized that with the first movie too, but Empire Strikes Back for a long time. Hey, listen, to this day, a lot of people consider it to be the greatest sequel of all time. I mean, right up there, at least with the discussions of The Godfather Part Two, and some of the most memorable moments in the history of Star Wars, which is why a lot of people will put Empire at number one. And I, I get it. Listen, to me, this is one, one A and one B. But obviously that only leaves one last movie, uh, The Return of the Jedi. There's only one return, and it ain't of the king. It's of the Jedi. It's. Uh, I have so many issues with it, what you just said. <laughs> There's only oh, one return. No. And it ain't of the king. It's of the Jedi. <laughs> return of the Jedi. Um, greatest Star Wars movie of all time. I mean, a lot of people put it at number two or number three, but for me, it just is. It First of all, to this day, the single greatest space battle scene in the history of cinema. The space battle scene up above the moon of Endor around the second Death Star to me is still, with all the visual effects advances and everything, it is still the greatest space battle scene ever. And the single greatest scene in Star Wars history here, the entire sequence and scene of Luke Vader in the Emperor's throne room to me is the greatest drama in Star Wars ever. That, that, that whole prolonged sequence thing is the greatest thing ever. I, I just love that so much. George Lucas's juxtaposition of the world of technology versus the natural world embodied with the Ewoks. Now, I've done a lot of editorials and breakdown on the Ewoks about how they are actually the most vicious killers of all time. But, uh, like, I, I love George's juxtaposition there of the natural world versus the industrialized world uh, that he played up there. Everything with Jabba and... All that kind of stuff to me is why, again, it's it's all very close with the original trilogy. It's all it's to me, it's one, one A and one B. They're all super, super, super close. These can be in any order that you want. But that's why to me, uh, Jedi is the the best Star Wars movie of all time. So again, just to highlight, at number 12, attack or Clone Wars. At number 11, Attack of the Clones. At number 10, Rise of Skywalker. At number nine, The Phantom Menace. At number eight, Revenge of the Sith. At number seven, The Last Jedi. At number six, Solo. At number five, The Force Awakens. At number four, Rogue One. At number three, a new, obviously the trilogy is right at the top. A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I have ended the debate. The globe around, everybody around the world now can come together and agree that this is the list. Well, it's my list. <laughs> anyway, Chris, uh, on this May the 4th, yes. how does your organizing of the list look different from mine? I mean, obviously the holiday special is number one. Where is that on that your list? That was not a theatrical release. <laughs> not fair, a theatrical fair, release. Fair point. <laughs> um, I would switch around your top three because I'm an empire girl. That's number one for I me. I think a lot of people yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is where I'm going to lose a lot of you. And that's fine because this is all subjective. I would push Rogue One behind Last Jedi personally. Because I was not a Rogue One fan. Oh, okay. I didn't really enjoy it. Although I'm very excited to go back and watch it now that I've seen Andor. Andor. Because I do think that's going to change the way I feel about this just because I didn't feel like a lot of the characters were developed. I felt like some things were rushed. So I'm really interested to watch it with that in mind. And, you know, I keep going back to the prequels and I, I watch them every May the 4th. I don't know why we do this to ourselves. But I'm trying to come back to them with a lot of grace because I had so much fun at those movies as a kid. My, my brother was five, I was 11 when I saw Phantom Menace. And it was the first time I think we saw Star Wars on a big screen, because I don't know if the, the re-releases came before or after that. They and came before. They came the before? Re-releases okay. were in the 90s. But it was really, really cool, because this was 99, right, Phantom Menace? Yeah, but was... the, these the re-releases were like 97. Okay, okay, yeah. so then I probably saw Star Wars then. But it, it was just really cool to experience Star Wars for the first time with my dad, and experience them like completely new 
with somebody who would made me watch these movies over and over again and was like, you will like this in this family. We are Star Wars people. Watch this right now, Christine. <laughs> um, so as as terrible as those movies are in retrospect and like me giving you shit for seeing it 17 times in theaters, I remember as a kid being filled with so much awe and wonder. And I, I try to kind of extend that same grace to the sequel trilogy, too, of these kids who get to see this for the first time and are like, holy shit, Star Wars is amazing. Maybe later on, you know, 15 years from now, they're going to look at Rise of Skywalker and go, so not so much, not so much. But it's a pretty decent list. I'll give you that. Just a few switcheroos for me. Um, what would you say? I, I do want to know specifically, though. Let's get into what, what do you think is the worst Star Wars theatrically released film that they've done? Like, I've got the Clone Wars behind so Attack of the Clones. I think some people might switch that up, but what would you say would be the, the most no, egregious one? Clone Wars is really bad. It's really, really bad. What about non-animated, though? Then it would be Attack of the Clones. Oh, yeah, way. then it's got to be Attack of the Clones, yeah. right? Which, uh, and again, those those prequels, what I will give them is the fight sequences were fantastic. One, one of the things we started doing is we just kind of fast forward. That's what I do. Them. I just yeah. cut to the fight scenes. Exactly, because they're really well done. Oddly enough, I did that with Obi-Wan, too. Yep. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, some people have heard this Star Wars story before, but this is how important Star Wars is in my life, okay? This is how important it is. Many of you guys know uh, I'm married. Uh, I am married to Ray's sister. Uh, the the soon-to-be Dr. Anne Campia. Beep, 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 beep. Yep. She, has, uh, she currently possesses four degrees. She is in the midst of her doctrinal program now. She's about to become Dr. Campia. Uh, actually, a, a, a fan of hers made uh, this uh, this collage image of her. Th this is my wife. Is she oh, right, you get to look at it again. Is she flipping the bird up there? <laughs> she is, as a matter of fact. Uh, Dr. Campia, uh, th that's my wife. Now, I want you oh, to keep that in mind <laughs> when I tell you this story. This is how important, this is how important Star Wars is to me. It is this woman. That about three months into our relationship, maybe four months into our relationship, when uh, we were starting to get, starting to realize, hey, this could be serious. We, 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 we really dig each other. That in a conversation, it came up that she said to me, this woman said, oh, I've never seen Star Wars. And I was like, to this one, this is how important Star Wars is to me. I said, okay, all right, all right. Like after I caught my breath. I'm like, all right, all right. Um, I said, look, this is great, but this is now on hold because we need to sit down and watch Star Wars together. And I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that your response to this trilogy is going to determine what the future of this relationship is. <laughs> and we, that's how important Star Wars was to me. Thank God for me. That she ended up loving Star Wars and now she's a huge Star Wars fanatic because my life, I probably would have ruined my own life <laughs> if, if she had. But that's how important Star Wars is to me. Um, hey, hey, Ray, let me, let, me, let me ask you. Hell no. What is your favorite Star Wars movie? Um, I like The Force Awakens. Yeah, that's yeah, that I'm, I'm into the, because here's the thing. Like, I, I'm into the newer stuff. I don't think I completely finished the original tr trilogy. Like, one, like, fully. Like, I've watched pieces of it. It's just, I started late. Like, I'm in right, sci fi right. now. Like, back in the day when we were, you guys were watching these things, I was watching what? Action Jackson. I was watching <laughs> I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. I was watching The Last Dragon. Those movies, when those were on TV, I skipped the Star Wars movies and watched those movies. All those, right. So, so, right, here's the thing Rambo, uh, Commando, all those were like my thing. But now, I recently got into sci fi. And now these are coming. So I hope I come back to the trilogy and watch them fully give them the respect they deserve, like I did with Godfather. Hopefully I'll change mine. But as for now, it's Force Awakens. All right. So, it's, so for the second time, I'm going to have the speech with an aura. So whatever this working relationship is that we have, how good it is. <laughs> no, no. Wait, wait. She did say she thinks Dune is better than Star Wars, right? Yeah, yeah, she likes Dune even better. Sorry, it's her, it's her second. That, that's, that's fine. Okay. That's, that's okay. fine. I don't need it to be her favorite movie of all time. She just had to watch them. She just had to watch them and yeah, hopefully yeah, like them. What if she hated them? I, then I, it would have ruined my life. Yeah. Because I would have said, I don't think this is going to work. Wow. Not knowing at the time that I would never possibly do better. And then I would yeah, be so, like, answering Anne's phone going, stop crying, man. She <laughs> stop doesn't want you back, bro. <laughs> 
get over it. <laughs> now, listen, actually, I don't know if you could tell, but one of the first things I knew about uh, our friends Jen and Alex, and Jen's back there right now, they are, um, Jen and Alex are complete <laughs> Star Wars fanatics. She just dresses which, like that every day. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, you guys don't know, but this is how she walks into the thing every day. Um, and which is one of the reasons why Ann and I and Jen and Alex get along so well. But uh, <laughs> if you had to say, Jen, favorite Star Wars movie, what would you say is your favorite? And what would Alex say is his? Um, his is A New Hope, I, I believe. The original? Yeah. And mine is uh, Return of the Jedi. Oh, there you go. I knew I liked you more. So, <laughs> so. Yeah, okay. every guy, don't bring him around. Jen, do you want to scroll over to this seat? <laughs> um, anyway, guys, question is for you. How would you, I mean, obviously, I'm being facetious. It's all subjective. You can have them in whatever order you want. The important thing is that we're Star Wars fans. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. Question is for you. What order would you put? all the major theatrically released Star Wars films that have been out there so far. Remember, don't include the holiday specials, the Ewoks, the three, the droids cartoon show, or even Mandalorian. But I mean, the movies, how would you rank them yourself? Mine's Whenever, Wrath of Khan, number what's that? one. Mine's Wrath of Khan is number one. <laughs> Do you remember when Aaron just about broke my brain? It was one of my favorite moments of this show. <laughs> how did she say it? <laughs> it was something about her being like, is that the one with Spock? Or no, something, no, no, she, something they, like that. Aren't they the same thing? Something oh, yeah, like I said, no, no, I said, like, no, 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 that's Star Trek. We're talking about Star Wars. And she goes, are those the, the same, same thing? thing? I nearly died. It was amazing. <laughs> I nearly died. Uh, she, 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 she was pranked you, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, it nearly broke my brain. Because Tom, I think, is somehow an even bigger nerd than anyone in this room. Yeah, Tom, her husband Tom's a Tom's huge a Star huge Wars Tom's a huge Star Wars well. nerd. All right, yeah. so guys, uh, yeah, write your thoughts down below. Oh, guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's show, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. When the spring sunshine is calling your name, don't call for takeout. Get HelloFresh instead. Their quick and easy meals make feeding the family and yourself a cinch and without the high price tag. Their new fast and fresh options are ready in just 15 minutes or less. And guys, don't worry about it if you're not exactly a pro in the kitchen. HelloFresh's foolproof recipes arrive pre-portioned and easy to prepare in just a few steps. You guys know Anne and I have been using HelloFresh for a long time now, and we absolutely love it. Both of us being working professionals, it's often difficult for us to find time to make dinner together. But with HelloFresh, it's easy, it's fun, and it's absolutely delicious. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Campia16 and use the code CAMPIA16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash CAMPIA16 using the promo code for 16 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit.